Greetings from Brother Stephan. I am a disciple and witness of Yahashua Christ. To all the inhabitants of the earth, I present to you as a witness this gospel of the kingdom. This lesson is titled Salt of the Earth. It is to explain Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. And we're going to jump right into the lesson. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Now, the first thing you need to understand is when he's saying you are the salt, he is not talking to everybody. If you go over the previous lessons that I did, going over the Beatitudes, um, I taught that he was talking to his disciples. So the first thing you need to understand is that he's talking to disciples. Disciples are the salt of the earth. And if you go back through each lesson, you will figure out what um, is defined as a disciple. But um, for quick, as for a quick preview, um, I will go over basically. Um, like you say, if you go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, going over the Beatitudes, it's talking about those that forsake all and follow Christ. Those that are not made happy by this world and the things in it. Those that choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Those who first motivation is not physiological, but spiritual. Those that are sympathetic and compassionate to the poor. Those who subconscious have been purified by the word of God. Those that overcome evil with good. Those that do not seek worldly justice nor attempt to prevent evil, but wait on the Lord. So, when we get back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, when it say, Ye are the salt, it is referring to disciples. And if you do not fit all of these characteristics here, it is not talking about you. You are not a disciple. So, um, you, referring to disciples, are the salt of the earth. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do here is explain why Christ referred to the disciples as the salt of the earth. And to do that, we're going to go to the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 2, verses 4 through 13. Um, and this is talking about um, sacrifices and offerings. It says, and if you bring an offering of a meat sacrifice baked in the oven, it shall be unleavened pancakes in fine flour mingled with oil or unleavened wafers. Wafers are just thin and crispy anointed with oil and if your offering be a meat sacrifice in a pan it should be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil you shall cut it in pieces and pour oil thereon it is a meat sacrifice and if your offering be a meat sacrifice in the frying pan it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And ye shall bring the meat sacrifice that is made of these things unto yod heh vav -Hey. And when it is presented unto the priest, ye shall bring it unto 
the altar. I just have here so you can understand that all, only the altar in the Old Testament is just a huge fire pit with grills, like a huge barbecue grill. So if you ever try to visualize an altar, that's what it is. Um, if you go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, um, there is a lesson that I did titled the lesson was titled um, I believe blessed are the pure in heart and I talk about um, this verse here I just wanted to explain it here in Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 when it says therefore if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother have something against you leave your gift at the altar and go your way first and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer thy gift so if you ever read this in Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 and like I said I went over this and I use this verse in one of my previous studies. This is what it's talking about. It is talking about the sacrifices here in the book of Leviticus. So it's saying before you bring this sacrifice, this meat sacrifice, go be reconciled to your brother first. And we're going to go to verse 9. It says, And the priest shall take from the meat sacrifice a memorial thereof and shall burn it upon the altar or the grill. <coughs> it is a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet taste unto Yod Hevav -He, and that which is left of the meat sacrifice shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the sacrifices of Yod Hevav -He made by fire. Verse uh, 11, it says, No meat sacrifices which ye shall bring unto yod heh shall be made with yeast. Yeast, um, leaven or yeast is what is used to make dough rise. For ye shall burn no yeast nor any honey in any offering in any sacrifices of yod heh made by fire and the offering of the first fruits he shall offer them unto yod heh but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet taste and every offering of your meat sacrifice shall you season with salt neither shall ye suffer the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your meat sacrifice with all thine offerings or sacrifices ye shall offer salt so now when we go back to Matthew chapter 5 um, verse 13 the reason it is saying the disciples are the salt of the earth it is because he's saying you are the meat sacrifice burnt on the altar for a sweet smell that is what that means that is why the disciples are referred to as the salt of the earth because they're the meat sacrifice burnt on the altar if you go to Romans 12 and 1 it says I beseech you Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I'm going to jump to Psalm 69 and 31. It says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please your heh better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. 
1 Corinthians 5 and, 7, 5 and 7, it says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. And this is why the um, sacrifice back in Leviticus in 2 and 1 says, No meat sacrifices which ye shall bring unto your Havafe shall be made with yeast, for ye shall burn no yeast. This was also referring to the disciples. So as we get to 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, it say, Purge out therefore the old yeast, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The offerings and sacrifices described here in Leviticus 2 verses 4 through 13 is symbolic for the disciples. This is why they are called the salt of the earth. Um, and also it says, nor any honey in any sacrifices of your heart made by fire. If you go to Psalm 66, chapters 10, Psalm 66, verses 10 through 12, it says, for you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried and silver is tried by heat, tried by fire. Once again, showing you how the disciples is being com is being compared to this sacrifice in the book of Leviticus, because they have they was the sacrifice was um, um, made by fire. If you go to Isaiah forty eight and ten, it says, "Behold, I, Yod Hevave, have refined you, but not." like silver and when when he's saying not like silver if you go to proverbs 17 and 3 it's talking about the finding pot which is a crucible when i have a image of a crucible here is for silver and the furnace for gold but yod hey hey try the hearts so this is what he means when it says, but not like silver. Back to Isaiah 48 and 10, it say, I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. So while silver is tried in a crucible, burned with fire, our hearts shall be tried in the furnace of affliction. Proverbs 27 and 21 says, As the finding pot, once again a crucible, is for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. In other words, what does that mean? It means when we are put into the furnace of affliction, so is a man to his praise. It brings praise and honor to God. God takes satisfaction in seeing us in the furnace of affliction. If you go to Job chapter 1 um, verse 8 it says, And Yod Hebav He said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear God and excuse evil and yod Bave said unto satan behold all that he hath is in your power only upon himself put not forth thine hand when you go to job chapter 2 verse 4 and satan answered yod Bave and said skin for skin yea all that a man hath will he give for his life but put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. 
and your Tevafe said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. When you go down to Job 23 and 10, this is Job talking. He says, But he, talking about your Tevafe, knew the way that I would take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold again referring to his heart being tried in the furnace of affliction burning out all the impurities and refining him like gold and silver if you go to isaiah 48 and 10 it says behold i your devave refined you but not like silver I have chastened you in the furnace of affliction. You brought us into the net. This word net here is referring to a fishing net. Again, if you go to Job 19 and 6, it says, Know now that God hath overthrown me. He hath compassed me with his net if you go to matthew chapter 13 47 through 48 and if you wanted to understand this in depth you have to go back to the study the true disciples and apostles verse 47 says again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net a fishing net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. Isaiah 48 and 11, it says, You laid affliction upon our loins. You have considered men, you have caused men to ride over our heads in other words mark mock us trample us underfoot and oppress us we went through fire and through water but you brought us out into a wealthy place if you go to mark chapter 9 verses 49 it says, for everyone shall be salted. And this word salted means seasoned with fire. Everyone shall go through the fire. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45 says that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun rise on the evil and on the good. And send rain on the just and on the unjust. In other words, through fire and through water. But those in Christ will be brought out into everlasting life. Everyone shall be seasoned with fire. Good people and bad people. Matthew, if you go back to Matthew chapter 5, um, verse 13 again, it say you, once again referring to disciples, are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his flavor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? And now we're going to go back to Mark 9 and 50. It says salt is good. But if the salt have lost its flavor, its saltiness, wherewith will you season it? Job 6 and 6 says, Can that which is unsavory without flavor be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? We, um, Matthew 5 and 13 it says, it is henceforth 
good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Luke 14 verse 35 It is neither fit for the land which means referring to the earth because they call the disciples the salt of the earth. So if the salt has lost its saltiness, its flavor, and if you want to know it, when it say what, so what does it mean if a salt loses flavor? If when a salt loses flavor, it means it is not doing these things right here and to be out to do no more. It no longer forsake all and follow Christ. It is no longer happy. Um, it is um, made happy by the things of this world. It no longer choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So when it is not doing these anymore, that is the salt losing its flavor. So it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And again, Luke 14 and 35 say, it is neither fit for the earth nor for the donkey. And this word donkey means shit. Sorry if that word offends anybody, but that's just what it means. It means shit. So it's saying if the salt has lost its flavor, it is neither good to be on the earth nor for shit, but men cast it out. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. So we can understand. So to understand what it means when it say, um, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. We're going to just go back to Matthew chapter 13, which is the parable of the net. It says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net, a fishing net, that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked. Talking about the unsavory, the salt with no flavor from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And we're going to close with Mark chapter 9, verse 50. It says, Have salt in yourselves. And have peace one with another. And this concludes this gospel.